Hello! Today I'm here with the first video in a new series I'm planning to try where I review a book and also read you some of the beginning of that book. Now I want to get better at book reviews and to get more comfortable doing book reviews so I want to try and do at least one book review every month and I kind of wanted to do them a little bit differently uh, to how I've seen them done before and just make them a little bit more me. So when I personally am browsing for books in a shop or at a library, the way I decide on whether or not I'm interested in reading that book if I haven't ever heard of it before, or even if I have heard of it before in some cases, is by reading the synopsis on the back of the book and also reading the first paragraph, the first page, first couple of pages, depending on you know how the, the book is formatted sometimes, the first chapter is just one line, that sort of thing. So the reason I do that is because the synopsis gives me an idea of what the book is going to be about, but usually, not always, but usually synopses aren't actually written by the author, they're written by the publishing company. And so I also like to read a little bit of the beginning of the book just to get an idea about the author's writing style, what tense it's going to be in, what perspective it's going to be, what narrative voice it's going to have, whether it's, you know, first person, third person, second person, which is unusual but does happen. Um, so that's just how I like to decide whether or not I'm interested in picking up a book. And so I thought that I would give you all that experience as well here, so you don't actually have to go out anywhere <laughs> to read the first few pages or few lines or whatever it might be. I will read them to you. So the first book I'm going to do this with is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas, which I read for the first time a couple of weeks ago and I actually really, really enjoyed. But I'm going to start off by reading you the synopsis and a little bit of the beginning of the book and then I will get into my review and my thoughts about the book. This will all be spoiler free apart from, of course, I'm reading the first couple of pages, which there aren't going to be spoilers there. So the synopsis. Meet Selena Sardothian, beautiful, deadly, destined for greatness. In the dark, filthy salt mines of Vendovia, an 18-year-old girl is serving a life sentence. She is a trained assassin, the best of her kind, but she made a fatal mistake. She got caught. Young Captain Westfall offers her a deal, her freedom in return for one huge sacrifice. Selena must represent the prince in a to-the-death tournament fighting the most gifted thieves and assassins in the land. Live or die, Selena will be free. Win or lose, she's about to discover her true destiny. But will her assassin's heart be melted? Chapter 1 after a year of slavery in the salt mines of Endovia, Selena Sardothian was accustomed to being escorted everywhere in shackles and at sword point. Most of the thousands of slaves in Endovia received similar treatment, though an extra half dozen guards always walked Selena to and from the mines. That was expected by Adalan's most notorious assassin. What she did not usually expect, however, was a hooded man in black at her side, as there was now. He gripped her arm as he led her through the shining building in which most of Endovia's officials and overseers were housed. They strode down corridors, up flights of stairs and around and around until she had the slightest chance of finding her way out again. At least, that was her escort's intention, because she hadn't failed to notice when they went up and down the same staircase within a matter of minutes, nor had she missed it when they zigzagged between levels, even though the building was a standard grid of hallways and stairwells. As if she'd lose her bearings that easily. She might have been insulted if he wasn't trying so hard. They entered a particularly long hallway, silent save for their footsteps. Though the man grasping her arm was tall and fit, she could see nothing of the features concealed beneath his hood. Another tactic meant to confuse and intimidate her. The black clothes were probably a part of it too. His head shifted in her direction and Selena flashed him a grin. He looked forward again, his iron grip tightening. 
It was flattering, she supposed, even if she didn't know what was happening or why he'd been waiting for her outside the mine shaft. After a day of cleaving rock salt from the innards of the mountain, finding him standing there with six guards hadn't improved her mood. But her ears had pricked when he'd introduced himself to her overseer as Kale Westfall, captain of the Royal Guard, and suddenly the sky loomed, the mountains pushed from behind and even the earth swelled toward her knees. She hadn't tasted fear in a while, hadn't let herself taste fear. When she awoke every morning she repeated the same words, I will not be afraid. For a year those words had meant the difference between breaking and bending, they had kept her from shattering in the darkness of the mines, not that she'd let the captain know any of that. Selena examined the gloved hand holding her arm. The dark leather almost matched the dirt on her skirt. She adjusted her torn and filthy tunic with her free hand and held in her sigh. Entering the mines before sunrise and departing after dusk, she rarely glimpsed the sun. She was frightfully pale beneath the dirt. It was true that she had been attractive once, beautiful even, but, well, it didn't matter now, did it? They turned down another hallway, and she studied the stranger's finely crafted sword. Its shimmering pommel was shaped like an eagle mid-flight. Noticing her stare, his gloved hand descended to rest upon its golden head. Another smile tugged at the corners of her lips. "'You're a long way from Rifthold, Captain,' she said, clearing her throat. "'Did you come with the army I had thumping around it earlier?' She peered into the darkness beneath his hood, but saw nothing. Still, she felt his eyes upon her face, judging, weighing, testing. She stared right back. The captain of the Royal Guard would be an interesting opponent, maybe even worthy of some effort on her part. Finally, the man raised his sword hand, and the folds of his cloak fell to conceal the blade. As his cloak shifted, she spied the gold wyvern embroidered on his tunic, the Royal Seal. And I'll leave it there for now. Um, now, when I first read that opening to the book, and even when I was reading it again just now, it really intrigued me. I instantly liked the character of Selena, and I continued to like her throughout my reading of the book. I found her a really interesting character. She's actually pretty young, and she gives off this hard girl vibe, but actually she's just like anyone else. She has feelings. She just buries them so that they can't be used against her. And I found her a really interesting character to read. The There are a few side characters in this book and I enjoyed their, their stories as well and I enjoyed their perspectives. It is a multiple perspective story so we do get a little bit of insight and view of the world from each of the characters. Speaking of the world, there's not too much world building in this book. This particular book is quite character and plot centred, um, but I don't actually mind that because this is quite a long series. I think there are eight books in the series in total, and I imagine that there's going to be a lot more world building in some of the other books in the series and I think that it was important in this book for us to build on our feelings for the characters and to understand what was going on plot wise, what was going to be the driving force of this series and that's definitely what we got and I didn't mind that at all. Um, there is a little bit of world building but it's more towards the end of the book so I'm not going to talk about that for fear of spoilers um, but there is some, it's just not very heavy on the world building front. As you heard it is third person and like I said before it is multiple perspective although Selena is absolutely our protagonist and the majority of the book is from her perspective which I actually liked. I tend to find it a bit frustrating when we have a protagonist but spend very little time with that protagonist throughout a story because we are hearing lots of perspectives from lots of other people. Now don't get me wrong, I do like multiple perspective stories, I just don't like to detract from the protagonist too much so that you actually find yourself questioning whether in fact they are the protagonist at all. 
Um, Selene definitely is, and we do get plenty of time with her, but we also get enough time with the other characters to be able to develop relationships with them ourselves as well, so that when they come up in later stories, we'll still be connected to them. As for the plot, as the synopsis indicated, the main plot in this book is a tournament trope, and I've said it before on this channel, and I'll say it again, I love the tournament trope. There isn't, I don't think, a trope that I love more in a book than the tournament trope, and it's done pretty well in this one. It is still a main driving part of the plot. I always tend to find it a little bit disappointing when a synopsis says that there's going to be a tournament trope, but then really the tournament element of the story takes very much a backseat. Now there is another plot going on alongside all of that in this book, which I'm not going to go into because that would be spoilers, and it does slightly overshadow the tournament trope towards so around halfway to the rest to the end of the book um which was a shame because I was definitely more interested in the tournament side of things than I was in that secondary plot um but we were still able to stick with the tournament and it was still an important part of the book and I really enjoyed it we did get to have some sort of training scenes as well, which is always nice. I quite like those, especially when there's a tournament trope because it gives you an opportunity to gain some insight and some relationship with some of the other competitors, which makes the whole tournament thing a lot more intense, in my opinion. So I really enjoyed that element of the plot. I really enjoyed the characters that we got in this book, um, especially Selena, as I mentioned before, our main protagonist, and I would definitely recommend this story. I am excited to read the rest of the series. I'm really interested to see where the rest of the series is going to go because I don't necessarily think that it's going to be all that it appears. Certainly I can see how there could be a lot to work with in this series. Like I said, we haven't really explored the world too much yet. We have an inkling of some of the politics that are going on and the things that are going on in the world um, but I think that there's a lot more to it and you definitely get the sense that there is a lot more to it in this book um, but I also have this feeling that these books are not necessarily going to go in the direction that I might anticipate and again I can't really tell you anything about that without uh, spoilers, but I would recommend this book. It's not especially long, it is, how long is it? It's 404 pages long, so not a, not a huge time investment in terms of how long books are, although bear in mind that some of the later books in the series are quite long, and there are quite a lot of books in the series, so the series is a time investment. But if you aren't sure whether the series is for you, I would recommend picking up Throne of Glass, especially if the premise sounds interesting to you. That's definitely what made me want to read it because I have heard so many mixed things about this series that I otherwise might have been a bit um, apprehensive about picking the series up and therefore might not have put it so far up on my TBR. But the premise, or certainly the opening, of this novel is very reminiscent to me of the opening of the Chronicles of Ixia by Maria V. Schneider. The first book in that series is Poison Study and we start with a girl named Yelena, Selena, Yelena, um, and Yelena is in prison and you don't know at the beginning of the of that one, what she's in prison for. I think it's fairly obvious with, with Selena that she's in prison for killing people because she's an assassin, but with Yelena we don't know straight away. But she's in prison and she's awaiting execution and she's taken from the prison and presumes that she's being led to her execution, as Selena does. And she's offered an alternative instead of becoming or instead of being executed, she can instead become the poison taster. 
and although with being a poison taster there is some risk of death, it's not as certain as the executioner's block, and so she takes that opportunity. So you can see that there are a lot of parallels between the openings of these two books, and that's what initially drew me towards reading and picking this one up. Um, but I think that's pretty much where the comparisons end. I mean, both main characters are, are strong female characters, but that's not necessarily uh, too unusual in uh, fantasy stories. So I'm not going to call that a comparison, because if you're going to call that a comparison, then all fantasy books are exactly the same. Um, not all, but a lot. Um, so yeah, the, the opening is very similar, but this book is very individual, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I would highly recommend picking it up. So that's it for this first instalment in this new series. I hope that you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd really love to hear any feedback. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button. I'd be so, so grateful. And I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks. Bye.